Look at that. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas. <laughs> nice. So we just rolled up to one of our shell beds and Dylan made his first cast out on it and caught. Popped a little guy. <laughs> no, nothing big, but yeah, it's a good start. Bad. Good start to a trip that we know that there's some fish on shell beds. So we're going to keep on bouncing some different shell beds and then also trying to find some more after we kind of check some history. So. Let's see what happens. Yep, get this little guy back in the water. <laughs> yeah, there's like two or three of them sitting there. I'm like, it was, I landed on the top of some fish. Look, I cut his gills. I can tell that collapsed my rod down. Like, I think that's carp. But probably the best thing you could do of all on a super windy day would be go to the bank of the direction the wind is coming from. I think I don't think this is enough wind for them to really not bite. Oh, I had one. <laughs> I was about to, but then he let go. I bet you we could come up with something. I was about to say, give me a couple hours and I probably could. <laughs> See how they like a plug going through their face. We've been scanning for the last couple hours and uh, we found a grass patch with some shell on the side of it and you know it's not a big one by any means but it's a solid three pounder and uh, look at that it's got like a leech or something on it but you know if we can get five of those we'll probably qualify but hoping for some bigger ones we're gonna keep on scanning around hopefully we might try to catch another maybe we'll see all right, check back in on the same spot. We caught that one, you know, three, three and a half maybe, and we started working our way up and ended up getting another bite, worked a little bit further up and ended up finding a group of them. And I'm just gonna show you guys what that looks like on the live scope because I know that is a big deal. That I, big question I had when I first came to Harris Chain but you can see them just kind of scattered across the bottom. And those are 
fish look like. Guessing, I don't know. <coughs> fish. Oh my god. Oh, oh. that was a big one. <laughs> that was a big yeah, one. That was I, that's one that of those head shake. Yeah, that's one of those big fish. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. You don't want my shit. Yeah, no, let's hear it. What happened? Huh? What happened? What happened? So we were graphing around on Lake Dora today on the Harris Chain of Lakes in Leesburg, Florida. And uh, I looked back and the, uh, I was leaking hydraulic fluid everywhere. And then I couldn't turn the boat at all. <laughs> let's see it. Yeah, that's not, that's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> that's supposed to do that. That's funny. Should be good for Well, we'll, yep. we'll go get him tomorrow, right? Yep, we will. Well, today was a pretty tough day. Uh, first thing of the morning, we had a pretty good day. Um, and then until about 2 or 3 o'clock, then after that, it went downhill pretty fast. Uh, most of the stuff that we were catching fish on, uh, that's what we were looking for and we found some more of it. There was fish on it, couldn't get them to bite for some reason. We kind of limited down some lakes that we're going to focus on tomorrow and kind of do the same thing and hopefully maybe the bite might change or if I switch up some lure combinations or whatnot and see if we can't get them to bite. So uh, I'll check in in the morning. Megan? Oh yeah, that's a big one. Good one. Definitely the size we're looking for. It's a lot better. Three and a half, four, yeah. Yes. Definitely a lot colder than it was yesterday, but we're out here just hitting isolated little, very tiny grass patches. And that's what seems to be what we're getting all of our bites off of at the moment. Our shell beds that we've been working, there's definitely fish on them and we're seeing them, but we're not catching any. And they just seem to be real shut down, not moving much at all there. But we are starting to get some more consistent bites on the little patches of grass and starting to focus in on that. Um, didn't have much confidence starting the morning with how shut down they were, but as the day's going on, it's uh, getting a little better. So we're getting a little more fired up. Um, for the rest of the day, we're going to do a whole lot of scanning. We're going to be moving around, uh, especially through probably Lake Harris, Little Harris, and Eustace, looking for more of these small isolated grass patches and, of course, marking any of the shell beds that we see going along the way. Um, we just are going to want to have a large array of those grass patches come tournament day so we can kind of cycle through and get a couple casts in on them. If the fish don't bite, that's okay. We'll just move on, but we want to have as many of them as possible. Oh, wow. You just get whacked. 
Yeah, that was a big one. I, I don't know if it was a bass. I think I snagged it because it was right by the boat to begin with. Yeah? Yep. Biggin? Oh my god. Down to the gill plate. Oh, They're all fucking. Huh. Surprise. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I have a fish too. Yep. yep. Yes, yes. Yes, you do. So we've been finding all these brush piles and a lot of shell beds out here on Big Harris. And it's been tough. I mean, it's been really tough to get a bite, but we just pulled up to one and they were active. And this is a third fish uh, caught on DT-10. We tried dragging different Carolina rigs, different types of worms, threw glide baits over it. And we got them fired up, I guess, with that crank bait. And then he, well, he first caught one on a Carolina rig and I caught two on a crank bait right after that. So maybe that might be something but so we're gonna keep on doing what we're doing um sounds like we found some fish but here we go well that's a wrap for day two uh pretty productive day found a bunch of shells and uh, shell beds and brush piles caught some fish off a couple of different things um, variety of lures that you know there is no pattern <clears throat> other than fishing offshore in that you know eight ten foot range and fishing some type of structure so tomorrow our plan is kind of going to eustis and poke around in there and try to find some more of that grass um, the isolated grass where we can go throw our worms and carolina rigs and uh, traps through and see if we can't catch a couple bigger than average fish but we're going to get back out here tomorrow and see what happens That's a wrap for practice at the Harris Chain. We've had a pretty good practice. Uh, we've caught some some good fish, some numbers. You know, nothing crazy consistent, but enough to kind of get my hopes up. Go run tomorrow, and so we're just out here rigging tackle, uh, kind of covering all the bases. Your, your typical drop shots, speed worms, crank baits, the whole ordeal. We're hoping goal. You know. Obviously we'd like to catch, you know, 20, 25 plus, but goal is to catch anywhere from that 15 to 18 range because that sets us up to qualify. And since it's the first event of the year, um, that's what we're hoping to do and set us, uh, set us up good for points.
this hype for nothing. It's been a crazy week practicing for this tournament, catching some fish, finding some fish, feeling pretty good about the tournament. And come tournament, we had a 20, 30 degree cold front hit and I had the wrong mindset that those fish were gonna pull out to those brush piles, shell beds, and some of that grasp when really in Florida, they shot up to the bank and everybody caught them punching, flipping, um, throwing some top water, um, you know, a mix of stuff, but it was all shallow fishing. And that was one of the first things that I wanna tell you guys in this video is when from what I've learned, when a cold front hits, they push up shallow and they get in the thickest stuff they can. A lot of the biggest bags came out of a popka. Um, you know, not, not the uh, winning bag, but there was a good majority of 19 to 23-ish pound bags um, that came out of a popka. You know, just to run through, run through the tournament, uh, my first couple of spots were gonna be on those brush piles because in a practice video, you can see that I caught multiple fish in that two, two and a half, maybe three range. And I was hoping I could pull up there, catch a quick limit for, you know, 10 to 12 pounds and then move on from there. And I pulled, dropped the trolling motor, pulled up to the brush pile, it was gone. I mean, I straight up could not find it. And I went to the next one, dropped down, gone and after that I headed over to a shell bed that I got a bunch of bites off of and caught like a two pounder that was not in the video and I had uh, some teammates sitting on it and so I peeled back around and I was like you know what I'm gonna go check uh, side scan these brush piles real quick just to make sure like that I'm seeing what I'm seeing and I side scanned by them and they were they were gone and that really messed with my head and then from then on we hit another shell bed um, by the Harris Bridge and Dylan had one on and I failed to get the net in time and that fish came off and throughout that entire day we had four four maybe five fish that we could got in the boat but it was just a one of those deals, one of those days of fishing where it never worked out. And the one we did had, having the boat, we uh, threw back at the end of the day. And then uh, day two, since we had nothing to lose and we had Toho coming up here in a couple of weeks, I said, let's go to uh, Apopka and go punch and kind of get a feeling for that more shallow grass fishing in Florida compared to the shell bed offshore game um, on Harris and Eustis. So we drove all the way up there and waited two and a half hours to get in the lock. And once we got there, we were basically stuck in a, you know, a group of 40 boats. After we finally got in the lock, it was about 12, 12 o'clock and we got out. We, I told Dylan that we needed to be back by like 1.32 o'clock because we were doing at 4.50. And so we fished for about an hour and a half, didn't catch anything, rolled back through the lock and we did have 40 minutes to fish on that same stuff as we were fishing the day before. And we pulled up and I ended up catching two fish and Dylan caught one and you know in 40 minutes we had three fish and sadly it was time to go at that point so we you know cranked it up and ran back to Big Harris got back and at that point you know we there was no points. We had a couple of other jury teams that did better than us, and there just really wasn't a point to weigh in. We didn't need to get on the road and head to Knoxville for the uh, Knoxville, Tennessee fishing show. And this one was a burner. I'm not gonna lie, it was a burner for me. Uh, the past two years I've done decent there, caught some fish, and I thought, you know, as I'm going throughout these years, I'm just building up more spots, more shell beds, more brush piles, and I'm gaining a better knowledge of Florida, and this event just really kicked me down. The biggest key takeaways I have from this event is number one, cold front, they shoot up, getting the heaviest stuff possible. Number two is basically everything you find on on the Harris chain 
other people are gonna have it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff way off the bank and there are fish that hold to that and not as many people have that, but majority of the fish are within 100, 150 yards of the bank and it was just hard for me in practice because when you're driving around the lake, you're seeing boats get in the line and aisle around the entire lake in that, you know, 50 to 100 yard range off the bank and it's just, it's hard for me to do and that's one thing and that's one thing I would probably change is I would probably have gotten in that line and tried to find some more of the shallower shell beds and then just rotated a bunch of them along, you know, and that's probably what I'll do next time is get in that line of boats and find all the shell beds and rotate them. But obviously day one, it was a shallow game and day two is a shallow game. So, you know, this, this event's a burner and a uh, tough one to start off the year with, but I'm looking forward to head to Lake Toho here in, at the end of February for the MLF championship. So see you there.